Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Madeleine Chan, and I will be hosting the Corner Bookstore. I don't usually do this, but because we're a family on USA Global TV and radio, and what we do, because we're so educated, we're so mentored to the point where we were able to share each other's shows or step in wherever is needed. So that's the magic of been on USA Global TV and radio. So a good evening to you all, the viewers of USA Global TV and radio. And we're also on LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram as well. So I just want to say a nice, warm, early eve welcome. I'm broadcasting from the UK. And for today's guest, we have a very exciting guest, but he hasn't arrived yet. So we're waiting for him to arrive in the studio. So until that time, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself as an author. My name is Dr. Madeline Chan, and my friends call me Madeline. And I've been writing ooh, since 2007. I started to write, a, it was on the island of Malta, and I was so inspired by Malta, by the culture, by the elements, by the temples, by the energy. I decided, well, I didn't decide, actually. It just so happened that I put pen to paper and I started to connect to Mother Earth. And through connecting to Mother Earth, I found myself meeting different people and putting them into characters for my story. So my story is called Star Child. And it's about this cosmic child from zillions of miles away from Planet Zinger that ends up going astral traveling, traveling in the cosmos, ends up going into a different galaxy and meeting Mother Earth Gaia, the blue planet. Mother Earth, Mother Earth Gaia, Gaia is very distressed because her people, her children, children of Gaia, are, have ruined her by their toxic substance, by their toxic ways, their material greed, manipulation, words, and fear, lots of fear. And it's really affected her. So she starts to, Star Child says, don't worry, I will help you. I will. So Star Child ends up going, descending down to earth and, and, not forgetting, she's quite a high vibration. She comes from a ninth, ninth dimensional planet, very high vibration. Therefore, she can't really be on Earth for that long. So she starts to meet a few awakened. When I say awakened, I mean a few human beings that follow with their heart and have a compassionate soul and they work in unity to achieve great things on Earth. And she meets a young athletic, his name is Malachi, and what his job or his path is, is to help all the malnutritioned countries, third world countries that have no clean water. So it's his job to work and achieve and get funds to help those countries. And Star Child, she kind of questions it because because she comes from a place, Planet Zinger, 
where it's of love vibration. There's no fear whatsoever. So therefore, there's no starvation. There's nothing like we have on earth, the low vibration and fear and starvation. And the big margin between rich and poor, there's none of this. It's just a case of it's all about love and creative expression and play. She's star child. So she gets very affected by what she's seeing and feeling. And she feels she starts to help these awakened human beings, the ones that work with their hearts. So there's Malachi who does this. There's another two girls who's a yoga instructor and also a fashion designer. So Serafina, the yoga instructress, and Sarah, uh, Indigo, who's the fashion designer. And these two girls are like rainbow warrior childs. They're always praising Mother Earth and they're party girls, but they are very eco. And so she really be, she befriends them and she really, she really starts to go, they're on her vibe. And then she meets a young girl, Paula, who's been bullied and has no uh, no confidence. And in that case, she's starting to take sort of substances to make her feel happy. And so Star Child has a sitting with her, almost like a meditation, and shows her another way. So she dances with the trees. She hugs the trees to Star Child, and Paula really relates she she feels this what the toxins did to her body Paula she feels that lift that positive lift from the meditation because her vibrations are lifted and she can't quite understand it but she loves the feeling and from that feeling she then starts to go on to a better life and it starts to fill her with more confidence so Star Child gives each of these beings, a human beings, a crystal. Because the crystal has certain healing and properties. And then she meets a cat, Larimar, who is, he lives outside because he looks after the other animals. And she's used to, Star Child is used to Larimar being a furry animal being that would fly. So it was very odd when she was speaking to Larry Ma, found out that he couldn't hear her. So she had to speak telepathically, meaning with vision and just with silent words, no speaking audibly. And then La Larry Ma understood and he was shocked that she understood him so he was saying you're not like all the other humans and then it came out that Larry Ma was campaigning and helping the other animals that were traumatized mentally and physically by some humans so it it's Star Child then explains to Larry Ma, you're not on your own. You have your elders. So she puts a vision up and you get this massive big, like a lion, a big lion's head, beautiful, to say, Larry Ma, this is your elder and you have many more and they're here to help you. All you have to do is ask for help. So Larry Ma feels a lot happier then, feels more stronger with conviction and brave and courageous, knowing that he has the elders with him. So it's all different stories at the same time, because she's weakening Mother Earth in a other quadrant of space are some evil wizards and ogres. And the evil wizard has heard that Earth is falling she's she's plummeting she has got so much fear in her and around her it's an easy target for wizard onyx who comes from uh, uh yeah 
planet. Oh my gosh, where have I got it then? Here we go. Yeah, Wizard Onyx. That's Wizard Onyx. And he comes from planet Zodosk. And they 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 feed on fear. They feed on fear, and especially because they're here of Mother Earth falling in fear. That's what they, they, they gorge on the fear. So what she does, it, because of this, Star Child's father, who's um, Wizard Obsidian. So here's Star Child. Okay. There's, there, you got Star Child here. There we go. Star Child. And this one here, gentleman there in the purple. This one, no, nope. this one. Oh my goodness, I gotta do it this way. Anyway, the, the one in the purple, <laughs> Wizard Obsidian. He's the father of Star Child, and the mother is the goddess of light, Star Child's mother. Star Child's mother got taken away with from evil wizards, sorcerers, wicked sorcerers that transported her onto another planet. Um yeah, so Wizard Obsidian is worried because Star Child has gone missing. She said she was going astral traveling for the day, but she's gone longer. So he goes and visits. Where is it now? Yeah, he goes and visits the Golden Healer, which holds all the records of the universe there we go the golden healer he holds all it's like a crystal maze and he he can see holds all the the um universal records and he also knows if the vibrations have changed in the universe so when he looks in the crystal maze to find out where star child is he says oh yeah she's on a blue planet and as he's looking there, he sees some darker shadows coming towards the in the crystal maze that's weakening the structure of the crystal maze. And he knows the blue planet is in trouble. So he says, you must go find Star Child and at the same time, you must free the earthlings of this fear and protect them so that these evil wizards and the ogres, this evil dark entity cannot come into the earth and destroy her. So that's what it's all about. And then they go to see uh, the warriors of the um, Cloud Nine. And Cloud Nine is a place where they play music in the universe. So the universe is not not made of words like we have words and speech the universe is sound and vibration and color and this cloud cloud nine holds the the symphony to the universe and when there is trouble and chaos in a planet this cloud comes along and ascends descends onto the planet and plays a certain frequency and a whole cosmic ray of color, rainbow filtering colors, which have a healing for each one. At the same time, they're playing this music from the higher spheres that come along. And what it does, it, it breaks down the lower vibrations and fear and turns it into neutral and returns it back to the creator and so she she ends up finding you know there's a bit of a love story to this as well because wizard onyx also has a son prince ricochet who is not got a hard heart like his father and he's curious about the humans so he does meet someone ethel who's come to the end of her life she's an old age pensioner sorry she's called grace old age pensioner and she's 
she's saying goodbye to everyone that she's met. And he gets confused because he thinks she's going astral traveling, but she's not. She's actually leaving the planet. So it, that is his first meeting of an earthling. And he questions himself about the mission that he's been told to go and destroy Earth. He says, how can I destroy such a beautiful planet with beautiful, when, when a beautiful earthling with such a generous heart, which ha, has, no, has no malice, just pure kindness, how can I destroy? So he questions this and he finds himself running off into the wilderness. Of course, it's alerted that he's abandoned the mission and he meets Star Child and she realizes he's not an earthling. So then they both, it's kind of a beautiful love story in the way that they, he's from the dark shadow, dark, dark shadow, and she's from the real light. But both of their strengths unify together to help them have the understanding and to help the, the earthlings as well as the cloud nine comes along to descend. And it's almost like this, the sky is filled with all these beautiful colors, cosmic ray of rainbow colors and music. And everyone is just looking up and just mesmerized by this beautiful cacophony of music, symphony of music and rainbow filtering colors of light. And they see these beings, all these beings, golden beings and 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 cosmic beings and blue beings that come out from the, the 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 ship and then they they put a golden bubble of protection around the earthlings while the darker entities are entering the earth's atmosphere so the beings the cosmic beings the galactic beings come in to help the earthlings but do not have the earthlings fighting the darker entities they just protect them in a golden bubble where they literally have to just keep chanting love and light celebrate love celebrate light and just keep on playing their music that's how they were instructed so it's a, a magical story and the story also tells you about the different planets and their resources and how they live um what's on the planet their resources whereabouts it's located in the galaxy you even have the star children akari and oriana and then there's sitaria with the magic sitar star child's brother it's an absolutely beautiful it, it took me a very long time to complete this we have the goddess of love which is wizard onyx's uh, beautiful goddess twin flame love and we have some beautiful um marla and dala a high priestess the blue beings and the cloud nine the cloud nine here i'm going to be making this book into an audio because i really feel that if people have the book with the music as well they will feel more connected i mean it is a book that's on amazon now and i've been on this book for a very long time <laughs> in fact i've written book two already but i haven't put it out there um it's going to be a trilogy it will be a trilogy um, but to be honest and I, i'm going to be actually honest with you um problem with me is i get distracted i do I'm an author where I do all the creation from, from working, co-creating with the creator and bring through pen and paper or uh, type up and bring it through and get it to the point where it's into a book, edited all into a book. And then I think, okay, that's it. That's my part done. But it's not because these days, not only do you have to be on the creative side, but you have to be on the marketing side. You have to be a business person. You have to understand about the algorithms of Amazon. You have to understand and promote yourself. And I've got to tell you, I'm a lousy promoter. 
I, I love creating. That's all I do is just create all the time. For example, I, I wrote a, a book about uh, singing, which I'm a singing teacher. And I wrote, I designed a course for singing. And I wrote this and I just love writing. I love writing. I wrote a poetry book on on how to transition from a, an illusion 3D matrix and how to find your, listen to your heart and find yourself and become your higher self, become your greatest that you can be on this earth. And I've done this all in poets, poetry and sonnets. Of course, I cannot take full, full uh, praise for this because I'm very much, I very much work with the creator, prime creator. And I work with the energy of creativity. Because what's important in this life now is being creative. You have to be creative. But cope, but if you can't be creative, then ask your guides, ask your creative heart, what do you want of me? What is my mission? And your heart will speak to you, meaning your heart, the universal heart, will speak with you and give you signs. So going back to myself as a marketing, I, I'm not good. I'm really not good. It's something that I have to apply to learn. But I'm a little bit lazy in that way because what I do is I tend to go, oh, time to write my next one, time to write my next song. I've, I've written about 150 songs. Time to write this and do this and do this. So I have a pile of, of creativity. And it's like, okay, what is the point in your creativity just clutched with you or sealed in a drawer? What is the whole point of it? All I'm going to say to everyone out there now, right? If you are writing a book or just writing notes or you've written a script for a book, don't put it in a, 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 in a drawer. Get it out and start working on it again. What I'd like to mention right now is in a very exciting book that me and Dr. Jacqueline have collaborated on. We've had Creative Hearts Awakening Book One, and which did very, very well on Amazon very well and received well by the public as well we are now on to the creative heart awakening book two now you've got to ask yourself why would i want to be in this book the reason why it's important to be in this book is because in the golden age the energy is about creativity co-creating co-creating, collaboration, but creating. Instead of having somebody else's creation, we're actually going to be joining our creation with their creation, building a momentum of the universe, of, of the creative, collective, conscious part which we have a human collective consciousness. So we also have our creativity, which is the human collective consciousness heart, the heart of human collective consciousness, in, in other words. This being in the Creative Heart Awakening book, you put your passion, your purpose, your belief, you put what, what when you did awaken to your creativity. What's what drives you each day to make you not give up? How it makes you feel, it elevates you. How it can bring a message to the collective human consciousness or the human collective heart consciousness. And how it has changed your life. This is the testimony to life now. This is what it's going to be. It's going to be about creativity, 
and abundance, being co-creating with the creator. Because you don't do it all yourself. You really don't. Because anything that is birthed as an idea is originally birthed from the creator, which you are connecting your heart to the creator. All these amazing genius inventions, they were all to do birthed with the creator. But now it's a case of instead of us going along with somebody else's creation, like with the TV or following someone who's a big celebrity and buying everything of them all the time. Now we have the dream world that's come to us, meaning now we have that opportunity by Connecting to our inner world, our heart, our creative genius, we have that opportunity now to express and become the best that we can become, whether it's a celebrity, however you want, what, however you feel resonates with you. Instead of following someone else, you can become that and more. So, all I'm going to say is, if you have some weaknesses, like, for example, I have some weaknesses, and that is in the marketing. And I was a bit ignorant because I thought, oh, I'll just get I'll just get someone to do the marketing. Yeah, that's all right. If you've got a lot of money, a lot of funds, that's fine. But if you don't have funds, then you're going to be waiting a long time. You have to learn your craft. So being a novelist, yes, you do the creative part. But then you need to do the business side. And the business side actually is creative too. It's all creative. And that's what we have to realize. Even business is creative. So you do creative. You need two sides of the creative. The creative, as in the idea, the concept, the action, bringing it through, the action. Then you need the a more the marketing, putting on some sparkle on it and getting it out into the world. Because how can anybody know about your book or your script if it's stuck in your house? Apart from friends that are around you, yeah, close circuit friends, but close circuit friends are not going to be able to sustain a living for you to make a living with your books you need to, them to go out there you also need to throw some promotions by saying for example for this week we've got this competition if you can answer this question i will personally send you the ebook of blah 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 so they will receive the ebook instead of going on, on there. So it, it's good to hold competitions. So they feel, and then what you do with the competitions is the person that's won that competition, they do a video and say, thank you. Thank you so much for, these are just ideas of marketing. I'm just getting a download now. And if anybody knows me, well, but, but what I'm like is I always get downloads. There's never a script. And for some reason, I just got a download about in-house competitions. Yeah, each week should be, you know, for, for yourself on, on social media. I'm going to give this. You don't give it to everyone because when you give, or even a paperback book, you send it to them because they feel valued. They feel well, and they will read that and give a great review. On top of that, other people that applied for this and didn't receive that, it's almost they're saying, you know what, I'm going to actually buy it because I really want that book. Because what you do, you, 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 you start a, a trend and you start a craving. And what happens when you want a craving? Mm -hmm. you, start, you, start, you start thinking about it 
and then it almost becomes habitual. You want that, you start craving to the point where you don't even have to think about it. You're just feeling that crave. And that's what that, that's what will happen. Well, that is how celebritism is created by trend and creating a crave. So we're craving for it, as well as, of course, through hypnotizing from certain frequencies and all this. But let's not talk about that. Let's just talk about the organic. And that's craving, craving. So you have to make your product and believe in your book. But give some as, as you know, for competitions. To make few people, so you start that community from that book. And what happens again is you start the crave, the trend, but people start to crave because the more you give, let's say you might do one competition a month. So, right then, so we are now coming to our close soon. Ah, what I really feel and would like to say is never forget about your creative heart. No matter what you're doing, whether you're a full-time mom or whatever you're doing in your other part of your life, your responsibility, don't ever forget to play. Because when you're in creativity, you're a child at play. All these inventors, they just played. They played, they wrote, they, they doodled, they played, they wrote notes. It's play. Creativity cannot exist without being playful. If creativity was intellectual, it wouldn't be as, it wouldn't provoke the emotions, the visuals, as what it does. And because it does that, it's because we are children at play with our inner child, at play with our creative heart. Hey, before, right, my, so my name is Dr. Madeline Chan, and you can find me, I'm the host of the film and music show, which I host twice a month. And we have some very exciting guests from the film and music industry, some established and some not. I'm also a talking heads expert where I talk about spirituality and about certain downloads that I get about transcending as well in these times. I'm also on the panel with the lovely host, Caroline, who's the host of the Woman's Prerogative. So I do this on Monday with Dr. Justina Mutali as well. My website is madelinechan.com. You can get me on LinkedIn, Dr. Madeline Chan. And before we go, I just would like to reach out to say, please do keep subscribing to our YouTube channel, USA Global TV and Radio. We are currently on 39,000. Our target is 100,000 and that was 100,000 we're looking for September 100,000 we're already at 40,000 at the same time we'd like to reach 100k subscribers for the Dr Jacqueline Kerbeck YouTube channel as well so we need we it's important that we continue to support because Honestly, everyone, what channel right now, out in this world, right now, gives you an opportunity to be able to promote your brand at a very affordable rate, very affordable, at the same time being part of a community of education, bringing hope, bringing your story to life. Hosting your own show. Yeah, guess what? Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck has this amazing course about two hours. 
in two hours, you can become, because I've done it myself, you can become qualified as an interviewer and host your own show. I would say, absolutely, please do take that course because the courses are really expensive. They're expensive. They really are. But the ones for USA Global TV and Radio and with Dr. Jacqueline are not expensive. And believe you me, if you have dreamed to become, have your own show, your own brand, your own produce, or share your own story, then this is the channel you need to be at. At the same time, you can get your friends and family to watch the channel as well and subscribe, definitely, because we're looking for 100K. Before we go, I just would like to say that please do join me for Talking Heads tomorrow. And, of course, on Monday, we've got Woman's Prerogative which is at 7 p.m. BST. And I would like to say thank you so much. I'm, it seems like our guest has not, has not arrived today, but that's okay because sometimes, sometimes it's not about that. It's about what's, what's needed at that time, what's required. So how I will do this is... I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed, enjoyed so much being the host of The Corner Bookstore. My name is Dr. Madeline Chan. And thank you to our producer, Chief of Operations, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. She's a super, she's a super status woman. She really is. Absolutely. She's a global leader in every way. And what I will say is, everyone, please do subscribe and let's help the mothership, USA Global TV and radio. And before we close out, just want to say thank you to USA Global TV and radio viewers. And we're going to leave you with our sponsors. Goodbye. <laughs>